Next speaker is Jessica Forcidio. She's a cardiac surgeon at University of Montreal, uh, the CHUM. Uh, her main interest is a, uh, are in vascular heart surgery and aortic surgery. Thank you. Can you try again to put it on the screen? Okay, thank you. So uh, let's discuss about the surgical threshold in 2019. So my presentation is based on different sources. So basically the guidelines from ACCHA, the guidelines from the Euro European Society of Cardiology, and our Canadian position statement. But as we all know, guidelines are there to guide us, and it's uh, clearly not a religion, especially about uh, all the discussion that we had uh, since this morning. So thoracic aortic aneurysms are largely asymptomatic until a sudden and catastrophic event, either a rupture or a dissection occurs, and is rapidly fatal in a large proportion of patients. So the decision to perform aortic intervention is a balance between the risk of natural history of the disease versus the risk of the surgical intervention itself and any additional long-term risk of treatment. So what are those factors that increase risk? So basically we have risk of aortic complication. So basically the size, uh, if the patient has a connective tissue disorder, a family history of aortopathy, bicuspid aortic valve, smoking history, aneurysm-related symptoms, a rapid growth, defined either 0.5 or 0.3, concomitant aortic valve disease, uncontrolled hypertension. And what are the risks related to the surgical intervention? So as surgeon, if we are to do work on the arch or descending thoracic, it definitely increases the risk. Patient with COPD, renal insufficiency, previous cardiac surgery, advanced age, and left ventricular dysfunction. So the size threshold for considering aortic intervention has decreased successively over recent years because of substantial reduction in morbidities and mortality for elective procedures. And in experienced centers, elective repair of ascending aorta and aortic root aneurysm carries a mortality of one to 2%. But of course, aortic arch and descending carry a greater risk of mortality and neurologic morbidities. So when is the proper time uh, for surgery? So that uh, remains the question. So basically we need to balance between the benefits, so basically avoiding an aortic, an aortic dissection or rupture, and the risk of complication of surgery. So um, like we discussed this morning, so the benefit, we don't know like the really the natural, we know the natural history, we have some statistics, but for every individualized people, we don't really know, we don't have a crystal ball to when the event will occur. But for the risk of complication, you can talk like with the surgeon or you can have the data from experience center that, tell, um, that can uh, help you guide your, uh, your decision as well. And for sure, the risk of surgery is way less if the uh, procedure is elective versus urgent. So the facts are that an increase in diameters increase the risk of rupture and dissection. And the aortas in connective tissue disorders are more vulnerable than normal aorta. So this is a, a very famous uh, paper that we all uh, studied uh, and uh, that showed this um, this graph here where um, the threshold of 5.5 was decided in the majority of the literature. But the fact is we operate at 5.5 because the inch point with the sharp increase of probability of complication is really at six. And uh, this paper was published in 2002 and include thoracic aortic aneurysm, but of all etiologies. So we don't really know, like for a patient with connective tissue disorder, uh, what are really the threshold. Um, so the IRAD registry and other data that include more than 70,000 patients have brought into question the current threshold of aortic diameters of 5.5 for ascending aortic aneurysm 
because in fact, um, the median diameter of patient presenting with type A and B aortic dissection was significantly less than 5.5. And with an intervention threshold of 5.5, more than half of type A aortic dissection would not be prevented. So um, before uh, talking about the guidelines, so let's just review the etiology of the aneurysm. So as you all know, degenerative one do not have connective tissue disorders or familial aortopathy. They are typically older and have uh, atherosclerotic risk factors. So for patient with bicuspid aortic valve aortopathy, uh, the there's an increased risk of uh, aortic dilatation and molecular and histological changes that suggest aortopathy independent of the valve function and the risk of dissection is greater. For Marfan patient, there's a greater incidence of aortic dissection. However, the risk is lower um, if less than five. And for the familial thoracic aortic aneurysm, so basically means if one or more relative with TEA with or without previous history of aortic dissection. So basically, uh, aortic dilatation progress more rapidly in patients with familial aortopathy, as we discussed, with greater risk of aortic complication. And the threshold for intervention may be guided by the aortic size at which other family members have had aortic complication, if known. But this, uh, we can discuss about this. And it was previously discussed, and I don't know what is the right answer. So for the non-Marfan genetic aortopathy, so the Lloyd's Deeds, the Turner, the Eller danlos the vascular type, um, there's a low prevalence of this syndrome. So when we're going to look at the guidelines, there is paucity of data on the risk of aortic complication. And the risk, we know that it's greater than Marfan, but the, the Lloyd's Deeds have a high risk of aortic dissection at small diameters. And the Eller Danlos have a high risk of surgical complication because of poor quality vascular tissue. There's also other consideration. Uh, so basically, the presence of symptoms, pseudoaneurysm, rate of growth, concomitant cardiac surgery. And um, we can also uh, index for patient size, especially in the Turner patient, the small patient. So basically, you divide the maximal aortic diameters divided by the body surface area. And if it's less uh, over 2.75, uh, it's a better predictor of aortic complication. And this comes from this uh, table that was published in 2006, where you can see here, and you, you don't see it well on the screen, but if it's white, it's a low risk. So it means 1% risk of event per year. The um, light gray that you can see here uh, with the 2.75 right here, the, it's a moderate risk with 8% per year. And the dark gray here, um, if you have like a ratio over 4.29, it's a severe risk, so 20% per year. So if we look at the Canadian position statement, so um, they divided according to the anatomy of the aorta. So for the degenerative one, they recommend a threshold of 5.5 for the root and the ascending, for the arch 6 and the descending 6.5. For the bicuspid aortic valve, so basically it's 5.5 without any risk factor and 5 with risk factor. And uh, for the Marfan uh, 5, you can decrease if you have also risk factors to 4.5. The familial aortopathy, it's between 4.5 and 5. And the other genetic syndromes is between four and five. So, and also if you are to undergo a cardiac surgery for any other reason, they recommend to replace the aorta at 4.5. So what about the ACCHA? So last version was 2010. So basically here for the Marfan, they recommend a five, or if there is family history of aortic dissection, a rapid progression, or a significant AI. Uh, for the Lloyd's Deeds, uh, so they recommend surgical repair, so it's in the range of the four to five, same thing. And uh, like Dr. Monjean said, it's uh, very important that when you take the measurement, so you decide if, either if you take it from TTE, TE, or CT scan, or MRI, that uh, you be consistent and that it be standardized in your institution. For the Eller Danlos, they just mentioned that the surgical repair is, uh, is complicated by friable tissue. And for the Turner, uh, if um, the aortic dissection risk is increased with bicuspid aortic valve, aortic cord, hypertension, or pregnancy. 
So for women with Marfan, and Dr. Ledzik talked about that, uh, so if they are contemplating uh, pregnancy, they recommend to operate at the diameter of four or more. And uh, also you can use another ratio, so the maximal cross-sectional area in square centimeter of the ascending aorta divided by the patient's height in meters. If it exceeds a ratio of 10, so surgical repair is reasonable because shorter patients have dissection at a smaller size, and 15% 15, 15 of patients with Marfan have dissection at a size less than five. So for the European guidelines, they recommend for Marfan to operate if it's more than five. Uh, you should consider uh, a mar oh, to operate a Marfan patient if it's more than 4.5 with risk factors for a bicuspid valve five and uh, any other uh, patient with no elastopathy, it's more than 5.5. And in, in case of BAV, they recommend 5.5, but if you have a risk factors, you decrease it to five. So that's the kind of range that we add in the Canadian position statement. And if you need another procedure, so it's 4.5. Um, for the descending, um, just want to pay to your attention that it's not necessarily a surgical repair. So for patient without any aerotoplasty, you can consider a TVAR, which is a stent graft. But uh, we tend not to use stent graft in patient with connective uh, tissue disorder. Um, so here you can see that for the Marfan, the dissection, like we said, so it's rare that it occurs less than five. It, it happens, but it's mostly over five. And that's why the guidelines from the ACCHA, uh, depending of the risk factors, uh, goes between 4.55. For the Lloyd's deeds, there's multiple dissections that were reported less than five, and the surgical recommendations between four and five. And for the Eller Danlos, uh, it's between four, 4.5. So uh, the majority of the dissection that you're gonna see are is gonna be sporadic. 20% will be familial and 5% will be syndromic. Uh, if we look at the familial one, so basically for the ACTA2 mutation, it, that represents 14% of, of a familial uh, thoracic aneurysm uh, and the surgical recommendation remains 4.5 to 5. And here you can see that a third of acute aortic event uh, in this series of patients occur less than five. And for the familial one, the MYH11, um, so it's, it only represents 1% of familial, and there is limited clinical data, but we extrapolate that it's the same range for those patients as well. So uh, the limitation of what we have right now is that surgical data based on surgical series um, from selected population. Uh, those studies are retrospective cohorts of acute aortic syndromes. It's single center studies of patients with inherited or degener degenerative forms of thoracic aortic disease, and there's extrapolation from non-TAD patient. And to conclude, absolute size should not be used in isolation, and we should index for patient size uh, we should identify factors that increase the risk of aortic complication in our decision making. Um, we should know the risk factors that decrease the threshold for an intervention. And early referral to surgeons uh, is good sometimes just to have opinion and to evaluate the risk of surgical intervention. So future research should be focused on these key knowledge gaps in the pathophysiology, natural history, and treatment of patients with TAD, including but not limited to the contemporary nature, natural history data on the risk of aortic complication, the predictors of aortic complications, complications other than the size in patients with aortic dilatation, and the genetic, epigenetic, and imaging determinants of the development and progression of the various forms of TAD and predictors of acute aortic syndrome. So thank you all for your attention.